Mary, we have to go to the root. We have to go to the cause. Dealing with the condition itself is not enough. Dear Mr. Massa, I'm just trying to mind my own business. What's the matter? It's just another day, another black king captured. I'm about to lose my brain stuck inside this ghetto rapture. I got a lot of smoke. If you want it, you can have it. They want a hat trick, but this is black girl magic. Ain't talking about the kind that'll make you disappear, but I'm talking about the power of the melanin within. Ain't looking for trouble, but I'ma say this one time. I put two dupes up if you try to touch mine. We still want justice for Samir and Trayvon. You say you don't see color, but racism ain't blind. They targeting little kids whose skin look just like mine. So I'm paranoid, it's a war zone outside. And I'm a black queen, so if you ask me to step out of my car, you gon' have to snatch me. Cause I ain't going no damn well. Had to spend my whole life living unfair. Ancestors got my back and they right here. You can never understand, it's a nightmare. Living in my black shoes by the black rules. You can keep your handshake, I don't dap coon. The white man would go nuts if he cash shoot. But you all on his side like a damn fool. Make it make sense. We are oppressed. Queen. We are exploited. We are downtrodden. Make it Queen. make sense. We are denied not only civil rights, but even human rights. Armor diet. Well, the only way we're going to get some of this Armor diet. oppression and exploitation Queen. away from us or aside from us is come together Queen. against the common enemy. Who taught you to hate the Armor texture of Who taught you to hate the color Armor of diet. Yeah. Parents, pay attention to the books, the school system, even to your little children. Lies mixed with wisdom. His skin too bright, so he was blind to the prison. My skin just right, so I collide with the vision. You trying to pray to God, but we tired of religion. No savior saving, we got to save our savings. We used to pay miss, how we gon' make the slave rich? But who's to blame and tell me why you complaining? We need a team effort just to rule the nation. Like a bad relationship, missing communication. We missing moderation. They're trying to get a poison to my population. No reparations. I'm getting tired of Satan. We are oppressed. Queen. I'm getting are tired of wait. We are downtrodden. Queen. We are denied not only civil rights, but even human rights. Armor diet. Well, the only way we're going to get some of this Armor diet. oppression and exploitation. Queen. everyone. Thanks for tuning back in once again to the original Queen Amadai Shakur show. I'm your host Queen Amadai Shakur and this is your morning wake up call. All right, so let's get into it. So as you're coming in, please feel free to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't done so already, be sure to click that notification bell and click the word all so you're notified each time Queen Goddess goes live. All right, and if you don't like what the Queen is cooking, you already know what to do. Exit stage left. Okay, hello black women stand up. Juju G from the land, Buck Horse DC. Coco B in the house, above all that drama, Nita's a Mike's world, Edward, that crazy bitch, Aries, wavy though, Courtney J. All right, let's get this party started. Hey, Deronda, spirit goddess, J.R. Meadows, blessings to you too. Capricornus, bronze, flat power goddess in the house. Okay, Clinton is here, Nessie X. Okay, so shout out to all of my loyal royals and everyone tuned into the queen. Let's get into it. Please get the likes up. You all know how they do the queen, honey. One lady sparkled is here. Okay, let me get my tea ready. Queen and Mona Huey in the house. <laughs> All right, so first things first. Hey, Jeff, I see you. Okay, so let's talk about it. Because I was telling you all yesterday that I thought it was all strange and clearly nefarious uh, that Diddy has gotten away with stuff for so long. And also, I told you that it was in my opinion that Diddy absolutely is the feds, uh, just like Kanye said, okay? And uh, that this is possibly why, in my opinion, I can't substantiate it, but in my opinion, why he hasn't been, uh, been brought to trial decades ago uh, for being behind Tupac's murder, because I absolutely think he was. Uh, so now we're going to get into some of these receipts. And I have some court documents that we'll also get into. So let's talk about it. Now, first things first. There was an article that came out, and I believe you heard uh, heard me talk about that yesterday. There was an article that came out saying that Diddy basically had something to do with it. And then quickly, 
uh, that article was said to be fake news. Okay, and that was supposed to be fake news. And they said that there was some alleged falsified FBA files. All right, so let's talk about it. Diddy denies LA Times Tupac story. So Sean Diddy Combs has denied a report by the Los Angeles Times that his associates were responsible for the 1994 robbery and shooting of Tupac Shakur at a New York recording studio and that he knew about the attack in advance. Now, he said the story is a lie. It is beyond ridiculous and completely false. So neither the late rapper Notorious B.I.G. nor I had any knowledge of any attack before, during, or after it happened. This is what Diddy said. I am shocked that the Los Angeles Times would be so irresponsible as to publish such a baseless and completely untrue story. Now, the 1994 shooting triggered the, cele the celebrated feud between East and West Coast rappers that led to the slayings of Tupac Shakur and Biggie. The Times said in its story, uh, they said that it was based on FBI records, interviews with people at the scene of the 1994 shooting, and statements to the FBI by an informant. Now, none of the sources were named. The story said that Combs, uh, who was overseeing Biggie's or B.I.G.'s white hot career at the time, and others lured Shakur to the studio because of his disrespect towards them. Now, the story said that talent manager James Roseman and promoter James Sabatino arranged the assault. Uh, they and Combs declined to be interviewed for the story, which appeared on the Los Angeles Times website, but not in its paper publication. Now, it was not clear why the story, which was written by Chuck Phillips, was published, was only published online. They say telephone and email messages to the Times were not immediately returned. Roseman called the story a lifeless piece of garbage. Okay. And now, uh, please pay attention. Now, here's what they talk about. The LA Times said that it will investigate the validity of FBI documents in Tupac Shakur's story. And so the Los Angeles Times says they will conduct an internal investigation concerning the authentic authenticity. Now, this is a whole nother article. Okay, so please pay attention. I say they will investigate uh, concerns about the authenticity of documents used in a story uh, that implicate associates, <clears throat> excuse me, of Sean Diddy Combs and the 1994 assault on Tupac Shakur. Uh, this is what the editor of the paper said. Now, in a, in a story that was posted on the newspaper website, editor Russ Stanton uh, said he ordered the review after the editor of the website, The Smoking Gun, told the newspaper he had reason to doubt the validity of the FBI records, which were supposed to back up the story. Now, who falsified FBI records? And if someone, in fact, falsified these FBI records, where did the LA Times get them from? I just have a whole lot of questions, but let me continue. Uh, they say, we're taking this very seriously, and we have begun our own investiga investigation. This is what Nancy Sullivan, a spokeswoman for the newspaper, told the Associated Press. The smoking gun said the documents seemed phony because they appeared to be written on a typewriter instead of a computer, included blacked out sections not typically found in such documents and uh, other reasons. Now, the smoking gun story claims that the documents were created by a, by a con man and the music fan with a history of exaggerating his place in the rap music world. Now, Combs denied that he had any prior knowledge of, of or involvement in the 1994 robbery and shooting of Shakur at a New York recording studio. The Times has said in its March 17th story that it was based on FBI records, interviews, and people at the scene of the 1994 shooting and statements to the FBI by an informant. None of the sources were named. Well, here's the thing. Now, I want you all to pay attention because this sounds like a whole lot of lies going on here. If the documents were falsified, where did they get this information from people who were interviewed, people who say they were at the scene? Where did they get that information from? OK, and supposedly statements made to the FBI by informants. Now, the 1994 shooting triggered the celebrated feud between we already know the East and West Coast rappers. And so the story said associates hoping to curry favor with Combs, who was overseeing Biggie Sock career, lured him to the studio. OK, same thing they said in the other. One. Now, so. I just want you all to pay attention to how anytime Diddy has gotten into something, either it was it was fake news, right? 
it would turn out that they would say it was fake news or somebody else would take the fall for it and be blamed. Okay, so please pay attention. Not even, and I'm not just talking about with the Shine incident. I'm talking about the Chalice Studio shooting uh, that he allegedly was involved in, according to Rodney Jones. Because didn't they, in fact, say that three men were arrested in connections to robberies in that area? And they said that they also were the ones who did the shooting at Chalice Studios, or shall I say, in front of of Chalice Studios, but let's not forget that they told different stories. They say first uh, that the man stepped outside. This is what the police obviously allegedly told the news because this is the only, the first and only report that I could find on it where they said the police told them, the LAPD told them that the man stepped outside in front of the studio, stepped outside where he was robbed and shot. And they didn't know if it was gang related. That's the story that was told, but then Chalice Studios says that he was a half a block away and that he was shot and robbed and then he ran to the studio or he walked to the studio. And then Sean Holly, Diddy's attorney, says that he ran into the restroom, I guess to explain away the blood that was found in there. Okay, so a whole bunch of different stories, but let me continue. Lights up, everyone, please like and share. Informants say rapper Tupac was set up by Diddy. I just want you to pay attention to how many articles there were about this. Because here's the thing. They said that the LA Times published it on their website, and they didn't print a, pub a paper publication. And they acted as if the LA Times was the only ones who said this. But there's numerous uh, articles about it. Now, informants say rapper Tupac was set up. Camera, cameras flashed and paramedics carried the victim into the glare of Times Square on a stretcher. Blood, blood seeped through bandages from five gunshot wounds. Tupac Shakur had been beaten, shot, and left for dead at the Quad Recording Studios at New York 7th Avenue. And I want you all to pay attention to the irony of it all. Now, here's the thing. I want you all to pay attention. What are the chances? I'm sorry. What are the chances that anyone would be connected or alleged to have been connected to a shooting at one studio and then decades later that same person is alleged to have been connected to a shooting at a whole nother studio okay is this a coincidence did it have anything to do with either of those shootings i just want y'all to pay attention that crazy beach area said the irony is all of it queen yes it's the irony of it all right Happy birthday, my Aunt Egypt beloved. I hope you have a blessed and wonderful day. Of course, this is all crazy. T of y'all said, how many folks honey done shot? Oh, yeah, that's what I'd like to know. That's what I'd like to know. Uh, but let me continue. Now, as he was born to be, as he was uh, born to a waiting ambulance, through a swarm of paparazzi on November 30th, 1994, the rap star thrust his middle finger, finger in the air. Now, it was a drastic moment in hip hop, the start of a bi-coastal war that will culminate years later in the killings of tu uh, Tupac Shakur and rap's other leading star, Christopher Wallace, also known as Notorious B.I.G. Now, the ambush at the Quad studio remains a source of fascination and frustration to music fans and law enforcement officials alike. No one has ever been charged in the attack. And again, and again, now here we go. Did he involved or alleged to be, have been involved in all these things and then no one for decades charged in the attack? Please make it all make sense. Uh, just like Tupac's murder. Now, again, don't forget that Dwayne Keith D. Davis is going to trial November the 4th. And I'm just waiting to see what's going to come out about Diddy. Now, newly discovered information included interviews with people who were at the studio that night lead, lends credence to Shakur's insistence that associates of rap impresario Sean Diddy Combs were behind the assault. Their alleged motives to punish Shakur for disrespecting them and rejecting their business overtures and not incidentally uh, to curry favor with Combs. Now, here's what I want y'all to pay attention to. Let me read this let this part again. To punish Shakur for disrespecting them and rejecting their business overtures. Okay. 
I think I deleted that video, but yesterday, I could go back and dig it up from my video from yesterday, but I'm not going to do that right now. Remember yesterday, I showed you Tupac when he said that he felt like Diddy had something to do with it. And then he said that he had proof. Do y'all remember that? What's in the chat if you remember me telling you all that yesterday or me showing you the video where Pac said that? Okay, it was like a 30 second video clip. He said, I'm not going to uh, slander their name like they've done mine. He said, but I absolutely believe they did it and I have proof. Do you all remember that? And then let's not forget the video that I also showed you yesterday of Diddy at the, um, the, on the podcast, right? And he was a big boy and he was saying that the song hit him up. Remember what he said about the song hit him up? And he said, oh, I wasn't mad about it. I just thought it was funny. Now, he knows he was lying. Just like he was mad at Tupac for disrespecting him in 1994. Well, he was also mad about the song Hit Him Up. But he wants to say he just took it for a joke and laughed it off. Please. But he literally told on himself. Because here's how you know he's a liar. I want you to pay attention. Because what he said prior to that, did he not say that if they went to a club and a DJ was playing Hit Him Up, they would take their turntables? And Ed Lover said, I mean, uh, Big Boy said, you turn it over? He said, no, we would take their turntables. So if you weren't mad, and if you just thought it was a joke and funny and hilarious, and you didn't feel disrespected, why would you go so far as to take people's belongings so they could play it? And remember, he also said, but then he caught himself, he said, he said, yeah, that, that was cold. And he said, I was I was mad or I felt some type of way. And then he was like, well, now, I didn't feel some type of way about hit him up. I just thought it was funny. You just told us you were mad about it. Now, but he caught himself. I just want y'all to pay attention to how he lies. But let me continue. Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. Now, it goes on to say the information focuses on two New York, New York hip hop figures, James Jimmy Henchman Rosemond, now a top, then a top talent manager and promoter, uh, James Sabatino, now in prison for unrelated crimes. FBI records obtained recently by the Los Angeles Times say that a confidential informant told authorities in 2002 that Rosemond and Sabatino set up uh, rapper Tupac to get shot at Quad Studios. Now, the records and summaries of FBI interviews with the informant were conducted in July and December of 2002. They provide details of how Shakur was lured to the studio and ambushed. Others with knowledge of the incident corroborated the informant's account in interviews with the Times and gave additional details. They spoke on condition that their names not be published. According to this information, Roseman and Sabatino enticed Shakur to the Quad, uh, to the quad Studios uh, by offering him $7,000 to provide a vocal, trap, a vocal track for a rap recording. Three assailants, reputedly friends of Roseman, were lying in wait. They were, on, they were on orders to beat Shakur, but not kill him, and to make the incident look like a robbery. Sabatino informed Combs, Diddy, and Wallace in advance that a trap had been laid out for Shakur. Okay, the trap was laid out and they informed Diddy. Okay, let's continue. Roseman, who, who has served prison time for drug dealing and weapons offenses, has been described by Vibe Magazine as one of the most respected and feared players in hip hop. Okay, his star in the entertainment represents rapper Shine, Too Short, Gucci Mane, and The Game. Now, Roseman long denied any role in the quad incident, and he declined to be interviewed. In a statement he issued he, uh, after a version of the article appeared on the Times website, Roseman dismissed the new information as garbage and fabrication. And he said that in the 14 years, in the 14 years, I have not, I have not even been questioned by law enforcement with regard to the assault of Tupac Shakur, let alone brought up on charges, he said in the statement. His attorney, Jeff Lickman, uh, said Roseman was not involved in the assault and will not be prosecuted for it. Now, Diddy, whose business empire included bad boy record, records and clothing and fragrance lines, also declined to be interviewed. In a statement, he said the new information was a lie, beyond ridiculous and completely false. Here's the thing. If it was beyond ridiculous and completely false, why wouldn't you be interviewed? 
You know why people don't want to be interviewed about criminal things, uh, criminal about crimes or what have you? Because they're guilty. You see, if you didn't do anything, you would at least get your attorney and go sit down and hear what they have to say and ask questions. I know I would because for one, I would be curious to know as to why they think that I'm involved with something that I had no knowledge of. So in my opinion, the ones who usually don't want to be interviewed are guilty people. Now that's maybe not all the, always the case, but I absolutely think in this situation, it was the case. Okay. Now the statement said that neither Combs nor Wallace had any knowledge of any attack either during or after it happened. The quad ambush had its roots earlier that year uh, with when the two, uh, Brooklyn born uh, Shakur, then age 22, returned to New York from California to do the movie Above the Rim. He befriended Roseman, the son of Haitian immigrants who had run with Brooklyn street gangs and worked worked in the crack trade for uh, before gravitating to the hip hop scene. According to accounts given by two men and others over the years, Roseman, then 29, uh, took Shakur under his wing, showing him around the city and introducing him to friends, including an ex-convict named Jacques, also known as Haitian Jack, Jacques, uh, Jacques Agnes, known as Haitian Jack. Now, Shakur and Agnes hit it off and were soon partying at clubs across Manhattan. There was a serious side to the to the revelry. Roseman was trying to establish himself as a talent manager, and he and Agnes hoped to represent Shakur. They encouraged the rapper to sign a recording contract with Combs, uh, with Combs' fledgling bad boy label, uh, which had recently received more than $2 million in capital from BG, uh, BMG's Arista division. And we all know that that likely allegedly came from Clive Davis, okay? Uh, so let's not forget. Now... Shakur also acquainted with Sabatino, a 19-year-old Italian-American uh, who co-promoted co rap conventions with Rosemond. Sabatino had Brooklyn roots of a different kind. His father was a captain in the Col Colombo crime family, according to federal authorities. Now, like Rosemond and Agnes, Sabatino wanted to ride Combs' as rising star, and he, too, leaned on Shakur to leave Interscope Records and sign with Bad Boy. Shakur rejected these overtures. Members of Combs' circle saw this as an act of disrespect. That's what they say. Now they say Shakur's behavior in New York grew increasingly provocative. He insulted music, ex music and executives and gangsters alike. He brandished weapons in public. Even friends thought he was out of control. So now they're trying to make Tupac the bad guy. I just want you all to pay attention. I just want you all to pay attention. They said even friends thought he was out of control. Which friends? Oh, what names some names? Okay. In November of 1993, Shakur Adnats and two, two other men were arrested on charges of gang uh, graping a 19-year-old fan at the Parker Meridian Hotel in Midtown Manhattan. A year later, Shakur was back in New York to stand trial on the charges. By then, his former pals were laying plans to exact revenge, according to the FBI informant and the others. Now, here's the thing. You all don't think. You all don't think that possibly Diddy had something to do with the woman who pressed those charges on Tupac? You all don't think that Diddy may have paid her? I have a whole lot of questions, but let me continue. Now, on November the 29th of 1994, two dozen bad boy executives and associates gathered on the 10th floor of the Quad, uh, of the quad Studio to record songs for a debut album by Junior Mafia. On hand, among others, were Diddy, Notorious B.I.G., Roseman, Agnats, and Sabatino. Roseman had booked an adjacent studio to produce a recording by rapper Lil Sean, uh, whose career he managed. This was the session at which uh, Shakur was to be paid $7,000 as a vocal guest. Now, according to the FBI informant and other sources, Roseman never intended to record the session. He had enlisted a trio of his friends from Brooklyn to ambush Shakur in Quad's lobby. Agnes and Sabatino 
helped to plan the attack, working about working out the timing, arranging for the three assailants to be driven to the studio and mapping out their escape route. Shakur's friend Randy Stretch Walker was in on the plan. In the hours before the attack, Shakur and Roseman argued several times over the phone about how much Shakur would be paid. After the dispute was settled, Walker notified Agnats of when Shakur was en route to the studio. Around 11.45 p.m., the lobby security guard was called away from his desk, and three assailants dressed in army fatigues moved into position. One sat in the guard's chair, the two others waited outside. And then just after midnight, Shakura walked in with Walker and his manager, Fred Moore. As the rapper and his crew moved toward the elevator, the assailants confronted them and demanded their jewelry. When Shakur refused, the attackers began to pistol with him. The rapper surprised, surprised them by drawing his own weapon. Gunfire erupted as Shakur accidentally shot himself in the growing. Now, the assailant shot Shakur four times. He sustained injuries to the head. Uh, to the head, hands, and thigh. Uh, the men beat and kicked Shakur as he lay bleeding on the ground, uh, then ripping a $40,000 gold medallion and chain from his neck. They escaped into the night. Moore was also wounded, gave chase, and collapsed in the street. Shakur managed to limp into, limp into the elevator and push the button for the 10th floor. When the elevator doors opened, the rapper surveyed the, uh, surveyed the assembled bad boy crowd. In a 2005 interview with Vibe magazine, in which he denied the role in the attack, Roseman described how the injured Tupac Shakur accused him of being in on the ambush. Roseman quoted Tupac as saying, while you let them know I was, I was coming here, you was the only one new. Why? In a bizarre twist, Shakur, bleeding badly, sat on a couch and rolled a joint. Uh, rolled a joint. Police and paramedics alerted by 911 by a 911 call showed up minutes later. Shakur was taken to Bellevue Hospital Center. Now, the FBI informant said that Agnats uh, seemed mad that Shakur was still alive and kept calling the hospital to check on his status. Efforts to reach Agnat for comment were unsuccessful. The three men identified by the sources as Shakur's assailants uh, were all serving time in federal penitentiaries, or all serving time in federal penitentiaries for unrelated crimes. The Times is withholding their names because they had not been charged. Now, in, in correspondence with the Times, one of the men said that Roseman orchestrated the ambush. Another was cryptic. He wrote that the statute of limitations for the assault had expired and he offered to produce for an unspecified fee the medallion that was in fact stolen from Shakur. Now, the third inmate de uh, denied involvement in the attack. Now, December the 1st of 1994, a heavily bandaged Shakur rolled into court in a wheelchair to hear the jury's verdict in the Parker Meridian case. He was convicted of first degree sexual abuse and later sentenced to four and a half years in prison. Shakur served part of the sentence before being freed on a bond while he appealed the verdict. Adnan had pleaded guilty to, met for, uh, to misdemeanor charges and avoided prison. The quad ambush triggered a vicious feud between East Coast and West Coast rappers and their record labels, New York-based Bad Boy and Los Angeles-based Death Row Records, uh, where Shakur signed. In April of 1995, Vibe Magazine published a prison interview with Shakur in which he said that Diddy and his associates, or Puffy back then, and his associates were responsible for the attack. Not long after, Bad Boy released a song by the notorious B.I.G., Who Shot You, uh, which, which uh, closes with a taunt saying, you rewind this, Bad Boy's behind this. Now, in June of that year, Death Row founder Marion Shug Knight mocked uh, Diddy on stage during a rap awards show in Manhattan. Two months later, Knight's bodyguard was shot and killed in a club in Atlanta. No one was ever charged. Y'all don't find that suspicious? In, 19, uh, in November of 1995, a year to the day after the quad ambush, uh, Shakur's one-time companion, Stretch Walker, was shot dead in New York. Y'all don't find that suspicious because let's not forget they said that Stretch was involved in the ambush, that he helped to plan it. And so now he turns up dead. The following year, 
in the song Hit Him Up, Shakur B. Little Diddy brags that he had SEX with Big's wife and vowed retribution for the quiet assault. On September the 7th of 1996, Shakur was fatally wounded in a drive-by shooting on the Vegas Strip. Six months later, the notorious B.I.G. was shot dead in Los Angeles, also in a drive-by. No one has ever been charged in either slave. Now, at the time of this publication. Now, in the years after the mayhem at the quad, at the quad, Roseland tried to dispel persistent rumors that he arranged the attack. He pro he protested that his innocence, or he protested his innocence in Vibe magazine and appealed to Shakur in vain uh, to cease his public accusations. The New York police investigation into the attack quickly hit a dead end. Uh, but federal prosecutors conducting a broad investigation of the rap business have continued to explore the incident. Music industry figures have been called before a grand jury and questioned about what happened that night. Two months after Shakur was killed, his album, The Don Kaluminati, entered the pop charts at number one and sold 800,000 copies in its first week. In the song Against All Odds, Shakur, like a ghost from the grave, calls out those he held responsible for starting the violence. He said, Puffy, which is, of course, Diddy's first nickname. Puffy, let's be honest. You a punk. You can tell the people you roll with whatever you want. But you and I know what's going on. Now, he also mentions a snitch named Haitian Jack and promises a payback to Jimmy Hitchman in due time. Set me up, wet me up, stuck me up. But you tricks never shut me up. All nefarious. Now, with that all being said... Queen Amanda Hewitt said, Poe Diddy is surrounded by deletions. Oh, yes. I mean, all these people around him dropping like flies, I find it all very interesting. But he didn't have anything to do with any of it. It's always ridiculous rumors and lies just being spread to throw dirt on his name. Let him tell it. Let him tell it. But let me continue. Lights up, everyone, please like and share. Now, the Los Angeles Times has apologized for using documents that were apparently fabricated in a story implicating Sean Diddy Combs in a 1994 assault on rapper Tupac Shakur. They say the bottom line is that the documents we relied on should not have been used. This is what editor Russ Stanson said in a story posted on the newspaper's website, saying that we apologize both to our readers and to those referenced in the documents and in the story. Pulitzer Prize-winning reporter Chuck Phillips, who wrote the story, and his supervisor, Deputy Managing Editor Mark uh, DeVoisem, also apologized. The apologies followed an investigation launched by Staten after the Smoking Gun website reported earlier in that day that the paper was conned by a prisoner who doctored the documents. Now, Diddy denied that he had any prior knowledge of the inv or in involvement in the robbery and that he was being defamed by the publication. The Smoking Gun said the documents seemed phony. Okay, we already talked about that. Phillips said the former, that a former FBI agent examined. Now, this is what I want y'all to pay attention to. First of all, this man who published this story, Chuck Phillips, is a Pulitzer Award winning, a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist. So here's the thing. Now, me, I know Pulitzer Prize winning journalists. But if I can go and dig up accurate receipts, you mean to tell me a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist can't? You mean to tell me this man who won a Pulitzer Prize published an article using fictitious, fake, phony FBI documents? He didn't verify this with the FBI? He didn't, he didn't make sure that this was legit? Where did he get it from? Was it sent to him? Did somebody give it to him personally? Well, here's what he said. Chuck Phillips said that a former FBI agent examined the documents in question for him and said they appeared to be legitimate. I'm sorry, what? I want y'all to pay attention. This whole story about fake.
fake fabricated documents and a con man from prison and all this who was a fan. I don't believe a word of it. This sounds to me like someone was trying to cover up for Diddy and that someone, in my opinion, could have been the feds. And if the feds were allegedly covering up for Diddy, well, wouldn't that mean that Diddy allegedly is involved with the feds just like Kanye said? Y'all heard that? See, I know that no Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, in fact, no journalist worth their salt it's going to go through FBI documents and then publish a story about said documents without first verifying the validity of the documents. Okay? So with that all being said, he absolutely had a former FBI agent examine them and he said they looked legitimate. Now, you mean to tell me a, whole per a person who was a whole agent wouldn't have known they were fake? And then pay attention because when the LA Times came back and retracted the story, they then said that the documents looked fake because they looked like they were written or printed on a typewriter and not a computer. Oh, now they look fake? You didn't think they looked fake before they were published? But let me continue. Let me continue. But Philip said that he wished that he had done more to investigate their authenticity. He says, I now believe the truth that I got duped. Mark Lichtman, an attorney in, uh, representing route manager James Roseman, uh, one of the two men the story leads to the Shakur attack, had earlier demanded an apology. He said, I would suggest to Mr. Phillips that he and his editors uh, that they immediately print an apology and take out their checkbooks or brace themselves for an epic lawsuit. Now, the shooting triggered a feud between East and West Coast rappers that led to the killings of Shakur and the notorious B.I.G. The story said that associates hoping to curry favor with Diddy, who was overseeing B.I.G.'s white hot career at the time, lured to court to the studio. We already know that part. Okay, and so the story and related features on LATimes.com attracted nearly one million hits, more than any other story that the LA Times did that year. Y'all don't find that suspicious? Hold on. Yeah, here's what I couldn't find. Here's what I couldn't find. When they retracted the story, when they came out and said, hold on. Hold on. Sean Diddy Combs vehemently denies LA Times allegations. Hip hop star Sean Diddy Combs has responded to a controversial new article in the Los Angeles Times, which claims the mogul had advanced knowledge of the planned assault on the late Tupac Shakur. The investigative piece printed March 17th claims that Combs and Notorious B.I.G. had prior knowledge of the attack. Now, here's what I find interesting. In an exclusive statement to allhiphop.com, Sean Diddy Combs denied the allegations. I said the story was ridiculous and all of that, we already know. But you know what I didn't find? Now, in a piece, in the piece, one of the unnamed sources involved with the shooting actually offered to produce your course $40,000 million, uh, $40, medallion, produced his $40,000 medallion for an undisclosed amount. Now, we already know that. But Sabatino currently serving an 11 and a half year prison sentence for white fraud racketeering uh, for charging up to $200,000 using fake credit cards, allegedly for helicopters, limos, and hotel suites for bad boys entourage during the 1990s. No, uh, During the 1990s, No Way Out tour featuring Diddy. And then the October... Uh, 2007, in October 2007, Sabatino filed a $19 million lawsuit against Diddy and Bad Boy from prison. Now, here's where it gets funny. Claiming Combs agreed to pay him $200,000 for footage taken of, by, taken of Biggie in 1994. Despite the fact 
uh, that a contract was never signed. Sabatino claims in the 1990s, in 1997, he was given a down payment of $25,000, but Combs has not paid him since, reportedly because of the LAPD, uh, because the LAPD had previously named Sabatino as a person of interest in the slaying of Biggie. A number of sources told uh, a publication that the story investigating uh, Tupac's shooting at the quad is the start of a bigger series. Uh, Phillips and Los Angeles Times are planning in re- that they're planning in relation to the deaths of Pop and Biggie. Diddy chastised the LA Times piece and completely denied any involvement and went on to say that he was shocked that they would be so irresponsible. But here's what I didn't find. You know what I didn't find? Because I looked. You know what I didn't find? What I didn't find during my research was anything anywhere that Diddy, in fact, sued the LA Times for defamation, libel, and slander. You see, if someone printed something like that about me, the first thing I would have done is gotten an attorney and sued them. I wouldn't care if they retracted the story or not. I wouldn't care if they came back and apologized or not because over a hundred people, I'm sorry, over a million people saw that story. And if I knew I had nothing to do with it, I'd be sued to clear my name for anyone who had doubts or suggestions. I just find it interesting, so all I'm saying, that Diddy didn't sue them for telling those alleged lies that he caused them. But let me continue. Now I'm going to pull up these court docs. Likes up, everyone, please like and share. And this is all per the Freedom of Information Act. Hold on, beloveds. And everyone, please get the likes up. Please like and share. Thank you in advance. Okay, here we go. Let me share my screen. Hold on, I'm gonna try to zoom in in just a second. Okay. Fulfilled Investigation Instituted. Now, this is April the 15th of 1997. Details uh, for information of receiving of receiving offices on October the 17th, 1996, a preliminary inquiry was initiated at Los Angeles Field Office to corroborate source information uh, that a known organized crime figure, along with a group of unidentified individuals, were utilizing death threats in furtherance of extortion attempts targeted towards two former prominent rap musicians from the L.A. area and other victims yet un- yet unidentified. Now, JDL and others yet, uh, yet unidentified have been extorting money from various rap music stars via death threats. The scheme involves the name is redacted, as you can see, and other subjects making telephonic death threats to the rap star. Subjects then intercede by contacting the victim and offering and offering projection for a fee or protection. I'm sorry for a fee. Now, source reported that Eric Wright, also known as Easy E, who owned Ruthless Records, Woodland, Woodland Hills, California, 
uh, was a victim of this extortion scheme prior to dying from AIDS, had also reportedly targeted Tupac Shakur uh, to his recent murder in Las Vegas, prior to his recent murder in Las Vegas, Nevada. On March the 27th of 1995, a blank filed a civil suit against Rod, Ronald Sweeney, entertainment attorney for the Wright Estate. This lawsuit titled Compton, Compton Records, Inc. et al. v. Uh, versus law offices, Ronald Sweeney. Hold on. Okay, et al. civil case number, and I'm not going to say the number, was filed in Los Angeles Superior Court. Now, goes on to say... The results of this lawsuit were classified confidential and require a subpoena, which is pending. It is believed that Blank received approximately one and a half million dollars in a court settlement. Hold on, beloveds. Identified Easy E, who's deceased, who reportedly was targeted by subjects for extortion prior to dying from AIDS. Okay, then it goes on to say, in addition to the aforementioned on October the 8th of 1996, Detective Blank from LAPD, the writer, interviewed a Los Angeles source of proven reliability concerning the ODEH bombing matter. Now, during that interview, source corroborated the above the above information, according to source Blake, reportedly enlists the services of one Blake, not further identified at this time, uh, whom source described as a caper, um, as a capper or ambulance chaser uh, to assist with the extortion scheme. Source stated that Blake used this same scheme when he would rip off drug dealers. Source stated that the monetary amount being extorted is in the $50,000 range. Now, the writer is familiar with captioned subjects as their names have surfaced in the ODEA uh, investigation and also a case captioned, uh, Jewish Defense League. Since two independent sources have reported captioned matter, it is recommended uh, that, two, that a 266A matter be opened up and assigned uh, to, the, to the writer with Detective Blank. And department blank. Tupac, a victim of his message. Rapper cannot escape. Rapper cannot escape the world he idolized. Now, last Friday, dozens of Tupac fans gathered outside Universal, uh, University Medical Center in Las Vegas to mourn the death of their slain idol. Mortally wounded during a drive-by shooting near the Vegas Strip, Shakur finally met the end that he so vehemently invoked in many of his songs. But in this time of grief and mourning, what was the real impact of his message? In a society where racial, e racial equality has yet to be reached, uh, Shakur simply polarized the opposing sides with his message of hate and intolerance. Instead of using his talents to bring the races together, he did everything imaginable, whether intentional or not, to make peaceful coexistence impossible. Now, I want you all to pay attention to how they demonize Pac in here. How they demonize Pac in here, and they, they talk about, oh, he was trying to keep people separated, and, you know, trying to paint him out to be someone nefarious. Okay? I just want you all to pay attention to this. Terry said, I didn't think Tupac idolized this world. Of course he did. He's a last to tell. Please pay attention. Now, living in a country where homicide rates are the highest in the world, Shakur blindly promoted the indiscriminate use of guns and violence to make amends. Shakur even became a victim of his own message when he was shot five times during a 1994 robbery attempt. Although Shakur tried to convey a positive image of women and fatherhood in some of his early songs, Whatever credibility he possessed quickly deteriorated when in 1995 he was arrested and sentenced to jail for essentially attacking a 21-year-old woman. Shakur's detrimental message fueled the fires of political conservatives who called for such extremes as censorship and nationwide imposition of what they considered to be true family values. Even in pronouncing his own First Amendment rights, Shakur managed to attract negative publicity uh, to this most intrinsic 
um, right guaranteed to all Americans. This is dated October the 18th, 1996. So this is like a little over a month after Tupac was murdered. Now they're going to say, this is so sad. Sometimes the lure of violent culture is so magnetic that even when one overcomes it with material success, it continues to call. What I would like to know is what Reverend, Jess, Reverend Jackson considers overcoming violence. As I recall, Shakur overcame violence by explicitly endorsing it. Therefore, he could never have overcome it. On the contrary, he just became another victim in a hopelessly tragic way of life himself uh, that he himself helped advance. Of course, Shakur is not alone. He joins the long list of dead heroes who in living have done their part to propagate a perilous life, a perilous way of life without regard to future consequences. Just as Gary Gar Jerry Garcia in his promotion of drug use during the 60s and 70s, Shakur will forever be remembered by a leading, uh, for leading a generation down the road of neglect and despair. I want you all to pay attention to how they're talking about Tupac. Unfortunately, in our world, all of the wrong role models attract the attention of the masses, whether they be athletes or politicians. They, these individuals degrade the most basic values of integrity and recitative. Uh, to make matters worse, in shame, they are still heralded by fellow peers. Tragically, those who seek to make a way or to make a positive dip, uh, difference simply go overlooked or are suppressed by the powers that be. And it is disappointing that 28 years of his uh, 28 years after his death, Dr. Martin Luther King's message of nonviolence and assimilation can be superseded by the narrow and tolerant message professed by individuals such as white supremacists, anti-Semites, and in this case, Tupac Shakur. Now, why is that important? Why is that important? Tupac was a whole revolutionary, just like his godmother, Asada Shakur, just like his mother, Afini Shakur, just like his stepfather, Matulu Shakur. Okay? So here's the thing. I want you to pay attention because they are demonizing him even in his death. And this is what they're saying. Now, I want you to listen to, think about what they're saying here. They said that he basically used his music to perpetuate violence in our community. But guess what? How does that make sense? Because didn't they say, and I believe it was, um, which one of the guys from Bone Thugs and Harmony? I think it was, it wasn't Busy Bone. I can't remember which one, but if you remember, remember when they talked about the meeting that they had with certain rappers? And they had a meeting to tell them that they wanted them to promote violence in music. They wanted them to talk about death, destruction, and drugs because they have these private prisons set up. And that's a good way to fill them. Do you all remember when this was alleged? Do you all remember when this was alleged? Crazy bone. Thank you, OG Patrice. Do you all remember this? So here's the thing. Even now, how many times have I told you all that they're using people like Sexy Red and Sukiyana? Super, and Krishan Rock and Blueface, they're using these people to perpetuate foolishness in our community, okay? To make our people look stupid, to be worried about debauchery, have them praising people that are nothing but hood rats and thugs, in the case of Blueface. So with that all being said, they don't have a problem with that. If Tupac was promoting that, what they say, they wouldn't have wanted him dead, in my opinion. Because I absolutely believe they wanted him dead. And I also believe that the things they're saying make it more plausible as to why his murder has gone unsolved for decades. Because, I'm sorry, I absolutely think that Diddy was behind it. I absolutely think that the feds knew he was behind it. I absolutely think that they also knew that he was behind, allegedly, the shooting at Quad Studios. Because how does this make sense? So now they're mad because they said Tupac was promoting violence and all of this. Tupac was promoting for black people to protect and defend themselves. Why is it always a problem when we want to defend and protect ourselves? Why is it always a problem? But let me continue. Inside the mind of Tupac Shakur, there was never a beef 
only a difference of opinion. My homeboy Suge gave me the best advice that I could ever get from anybody. When people ask him if he's beefing with Bad Boy and with Puffy, he says, it's like me going to the playground to pick on little kids. That's like me being mad at my little brother because he's getting cash now. I'm not mad at all. I'm just, I'm just mad at my little brother when he don't respect me. And when he don't respect me, I'm going to spank that ace. I don't give a F how rich you got and the block. I don't give a F how rich you got on the block. Oh, I'm sorry. On the block. I'm your big brother. I'm a, I'm a break your, uh, your big ace down. Now that's, that's my only point. I feel as though he wrong. He got out of hand. He got seduced. He got seduced by the power. Not, but not because he's an evil person, but because money is evil. If it's not handled right. Now, if you lose your composure, you could do anything. Fear got fear got stronger than love, and ninjas did things that they weren't they weren't really supposed to do. They know in their hearts, they know in their hearts, uh, that's why they're in hell now. Uh, they can't they can't sleep. That's why they're telling all the reporters and all the people why they're doing this. They effing up hip hop, blah, 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 because they inhale. They can't make money. They can't go anywhere. They can't look at themselves because they know the prodigal son has returned. I'm alive. The ghost is walking around and I'm walking and I'm around talking. In jail, I didn't talk. Now everybody who thinks I disrespected, I love my, now everybody who thinks I disrespected. I love my East Coast fans. I'm from there. I'm eating New York pizza. I drive New York Jeeps. But I'm saying, let's, let's keep it real for a second. If you if you're the half lover of music, uh, if you're the half lover of music that you are, go back and study. Study how party and and BS was was uh and BS was me before before I met Biggie. You don't hear my style in his raps. Uh, study how you don't hear my style in his raps. Now study how after I met Biggie. Ready to Die comes out, and his whole style changes. Study. Study Biggie. Read, uh, study Biggie. Ready to Die comes out, and his whole style changes. Study why I would be mad when half of the major New York rappers or their managers or their agents or their somebody was there when I got shot, and nobody could give me no information. Just study that. Study how when Wu-Tang got their chain snatched at 6'6 six, six Deuce, I not only found who did it, but gave them the message that if they wanted to see the ninjas, if they wanted to see the ninjas that did it, they could see them. Man to man, just you and them. No guns, no nothing if you feel like it. That's all I ask for. If you're going to act like a gangster or a G or a king of New York, I'm going to expect that. And when you don't come through, then I'm going to want to crush your empire. And that's what it's time for. Okay, so I would assume that they published this along with the documents to further demonize Pac as if he was someone who was um, promoting violence. And again, as I said, isn't that what they always want rappers to promote? Now, this came out September the 9th was published September the 9th, 1996. Gangsta rap star Tupac Shakur was in critical condition in a Los Angeles hospital. Okay, I'm going to skip past all of this because we already talked about the shooting at Quad Studios. Oh, no, I'm sorry. This was the shooting in Vegas. So he was in critical condition in a Las Vegas hospital today after an assailant pumped four bullets into his head and chest during a drive-by shooting Saturday night. The 25-year-old rap star was shot as he and Marion Shook Knight, chairman of Death Row Records, Shook, uh, Shakur's label, were on their way to a nightclub about 11.15 p.m. after watching the Mike Tyson, Bruce Seldon heavyweight uh, title fight at the MGM Grand Hotel. Shakur underwent emergency surgery for multiple gunshot wounds and remained under heavy police and private guard in the trauma intensive care unit, according to a spokesman uh, from University Medical Center. Knight, age 31, was hit in the head by shrapnel and was released from the hospital that day. 
The shooting was the most serious in a string of violent incidents involving the rap star who appeared Wednesday at the MTV Video Music Awards, where he and members of his entourage got into an argument with several men in the lobby of New York's Radio City Music Hall. Police were called to break it up. In November of 1994, Shakur was shot five times in the lobby of a New York recording studio uh, with, with, uh, with muggers stealing his jewelry open fire. He has spent much of his two and a half years in court or in custody on various charges. A handsome, swaggering man with long eyelashes and a, and a pension for showy jewelry, Shakur has been a prominent symbol of, a gangster, of gangster music or for gangster music, enthusiastically following by, followed by teenage fans and long criticized by adults for its implicit, uh, implicitly violent and sexual images. Saturday's incident underscored the link between some rap stars, despite their celebrity status, and the dangerous melee um, that gave rise to their music. Now, in the weekend shooting, Knight was driving with Shakur in a con with with Shakur in a convoy of ten cars about a quarter mile from the glittering casino strip when a white Cadillac with four people inside pulled up alongside their black BMW and a passenger opened fire. Local media reports said dozens of witnesses looked on in horror. Police said they had begun an investigation to the shooting and had no suspects as of yet. Drive-by shootings are not unknown here, but they usually occur between rival gang members whose reasons are for retaliation for other shootings, according to Los Angeles or Las Vegas Police Lieutenant Mark Masson. I can't tell you the motivation behind this one. But he said the police were optimistic that they would find the assailants. This particular incident apparently had several witnesses. If they are credible with good information, this should be solvable. If they are credible with good information, this should be solvable. Now, I want you all to pay attention. I want you all to pay attention because they had credible witnesses. Decades ago, almost 30 years ago, 27 years ago, they had credible witnesses. This should be solvable, but yet they never solved it in all these decades. See, I just want you all to pay attention. Like, for real, I believe people absolutely knew exactly, the police, not people, because, yeah, we knew, but I believe the police and the feds absolutely knew exactly what happened to Tupac, okay? Like I told you on yesterday, the feds were allegedly following Tupac, okay, had him under surveillance. How did they miss that if this is true? If they literally had him under surveillance, how did they miss that? Now, I'm going to stop it right here. I'm going to stop it right here because I have another live coming up in a few minutes on the backup channel. You don't want to miss it. Uh, but we're going to pick up where I left off tomorrow. This is part one. And part two, not only am I going to continue to go through the legal documents, but I'm going to read to you excerpts from the book, Why the FBI Killed Tupac. Okay? I just want you all to pay attention. Uh, so... This is all real crazy. Like I told you all, Diddy, he's gotten away with a whole lot for too long. Hold on, beloveds. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, at the end of the day, and I'm sorry, no, that's that's not the title of the book. The book is titled uh, The FBI War on Tupac and Black Leaders. Uh, so with that all being said, Honey Honeycomb's Day has finally arrived, says Deron. Yeah, absolutely. So he said, thank you, Queen, for the receipts. You're welcome. Uh, King Avery Black Power said, Black people releasing details that was left by the mass multimedia mafia about the Tupac case. Yes, here's the thing. At the end of the day, the reason I'm bringing all this up is because, like I told you all, Dwayne Keefe D. Davis is going to trial November the 4th. And also, because I'm just waiting to see what's going to come out during that trial. But also, the main reason I'm talking about this, hold on, let me take my overlay off the screen, or my, um, there I go. Another, the main reason I'm talking about this, though, is because everybody else on YouTube, TikTok, and everywhere, the only thing they're talking about are these actual assault cases of Diddy. That's all everyone's talking about. And I don't want Tupac to get lost in the shuffle because Diddy needs to be in prison, but he should mostly be in prison for murdering Tupac, having him murdered, allegedly. That's my opinion. 
I think that he absolutely was behind it. And I think that if he goes down for anything, he should be going down for that first. That's all I'm saying. And had he gone down for it, he wouldn't have been able to allegedly victimize all these other people over all these decades. Who was helping him get away with alleged murder? Who was covering up for him when he committed all these alleged RICO acts like crime? If these allegations are all true, who was helping him? Because somebody had to have been. He couldn't have gotten away with any of this without protection from law enforcement. If these allegations are true. I just want you all to pay attention. Okay? I just want you all to pay attention. At the end of the day. So that all being said, we'll pick up where I left off tomorrow. Everyone, hold on. Let me write down where I left off on this document. And then also pay attention because they say in these documents that someone, the same people who were threatening Easy e were also making death threats to Tupac. Okay? You're welcome to that crazy beach area. So with that I've been said, listen, excuse me, don't miss the next broadcast, because we got to talk about Mike Epps. Mike Epps said some things on the pod, on a podcast uh, with, I think it's called Up and Smoke or All the Smoke with, um, what's the guy's name? Matt Barnes, okay, and Stephen Jackson. And so he has, he has now apologized to his wife. So we're going to listen to what he said and talk about that. But also, Brad stabbed his grandmother 114 times. And then... Felicia was riding around with her son in the trunk, with the trunk completely open. Who does that? And so that's that video went viral. And so we're going to talk about all of that on back of channel. So I hope to see you all there. It's starting in three minutes. In three minutes, I'll see you there, beloved. So each one teach one. That's how we grow and thrive. Do something productive, constructive, but never destructive. And always remember to keep the most high first in your life. Soul all in my skin, God all in my blood, kings all in my circle, you touch one of mine and you're done. They show no love for the queen, why you hating on me? Is it cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans? I got dreams like King Luther, shed blood like Kusa. You ain't helping my people, I ain't got nothing to say to ya. I want all the smoke like hookah. Talking reparations, America won't be great until they give us compensation. I'm like, uh. I'm the hottest right now That's See right. a bunch of lames out here trying to jock on my style They be doing too much I'm the queen, it's too easy It's like they all at Popeyes How they be talking so greasy Real I just sit back and laugh While these haters get madder So nefarious how they don't want my pockets with chatter I tell them they can do better These snakes in the grass Can leave a bite on your ass Cause y'all be trusting too fast I got my foot on the gas other one on they next Dropping receipts on haters You better show some respect I'm never facing regrets We only facing the threats Running through every challenge Like a relay break, no sweat It's a cold game So I got that blanket with me Now that my people awaken Ain't no going to sleep I do not play by my peace This time I'm playing for keeps You talking slick But when I see you like them is We gon' meet And now I got gold all in my skin all in my blood. my blood, kings all in my circle. You touch one of mine and you done. They show no love for the queen. Why they hating on me? Is it cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans and I got gold all in my skin? God all in my blood, kings all in my circle. You touch one of mine and you done. They show no love for the queen. Why they hating on me?